Cambridge Preliminary English Test 7 by University of Cambridge ESOL Examinations in conjunction with Cambridge University Press. This recording is copyright. CD1 This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test. Test 1 There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. Where is the girl's hat? Where's your new hat, Sally? I hope you haven't left it on the school bus. Don't worry, Mum. I put it in my school bag because I was too hot. Are you sure? I can't see it there. You probably dropped it in the road somewhere. Oh, here it is, hanging in the hall. I forgot to take it this morning. The first picture is correct. So there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. How will they book their flights? So what about our flights then? Shall I book on the internet? Or do you want to go to a travel agent? Well, actually, I've already been to the travel agents and got some prices. They can offer us a better price than anything I've seen on the internet. Great. Well, let's make a decision and then go ahead and book. We could phone them, couldn't we? Or is it better to pop in? I prefer not to phone because I want to pay in cash. OK. Now listen again. So what about our flights then? Shall I book on the internet? Or do you want to go to a travel agent? Well, actually, I've already been to the travel agents and got some prices. They can offer us a better price than anything I've seen on the internet. Great. Well, let's make a decision and then go ahead and book. We could phone them, couldn't we? Or is it better to pop in? I prefer not to phone because I want to pay in cash. OK. Two. What has the daughter forgotten to bring on holiday? Mmm, nice bathroom in this hotel. Oh, can I borrow your shampoo, Mum? I left mine at home. OK, but put it back in my bag when you've finished. <gasps> oh, and I don't believe it. I must have forgotten to bring my hairbrush, too. I can't find it anywhere in my suitcase. I was sure I'd put it in. You had. I've already put it in the bathroom with your other washing things. <sighs> I don't know why you brought toothpaste, though. We certainly didn't need two tubes. We're only here for four days. Now listen again. Mmm, nice bathroom in this hotel. Oh, can I borrow your shampoo, Mum? I left mine at home. OK, but put it back in my bag when you've finished. <gasps> Oh, and I don't believe it. I must have forgotten to bring my hairbrush, too. I can't find it anywhere in my suitcase. I was sure I'd put it in. You had. I've already put it in the bathroom with your other washing things. Oh. 
I don't know why you brought toothpaste, though. We certainly didn't need two tubes. We're only here for four days. Three. What will the man and woman do on Sunday? Oh, I'm so tired. Shall we just stay at home this weekend? Maybe watch some DVDs and read the newspapers? Um... How about going to the beach tomorrow with a picnic as it's so hot? Although we really ought to clean the flat. Oh, I nearly forgot. Isn't your sister coming to see us on Sunday? Yes, you're right. She is. She'll enjoy a good day at the seaside, won't she? We'll relax at home another time. And then do the housework too. Sounds great. Now listen again. Oh, I'm so tired. Shall we just stay at home this weekend? Maybe watch some DVDs and read the newspapers? Um, how about going to the beach tomorrow with a picnic as it's so hot? Although we really ought to clean the flat. Oh, I nearly forgot. Isn't your sister coming to see us on Sunday? Yes, you're right. She is. She'll enjoy a good day at the seaside, won't she? We'll relax at home another time. And then do the housework too. Sounds great. Four. Which blouse does the girl decide to buy? Tom, I need your opinion about this blouse. I like the collar, but the sleeves are rather long. Um, I'm not sure. Look at some more before you decide. What about this one? Short sleeves, no collar. Mm, it's a bit ordinary. I do agree, though. It's elegant. Ah, here's one with a collar and without sleeves. But it isn't quite so nice as the other one. Hmm. No, I like the first one I saw. I can always make the sleeves shorter. OK. I think it's a good choice. Now listen again. Tom, I need your opinion about this blouse. I like the collar, but the sleeves are rather long. Um, I'm not sure. Look at some more before you decide. What about this one? Short sleeves, no collar. Mm, it's a bit ordinary. I do agree, though. It's elegant. Ah, here's one with a collar and without sleeves. But it isn't quite so nice as the other one. Hmm. No, I like the first one I saw. I can always make the sleeves shorter. OK. I think it's a good choice. Five. When is the girl having a party? Hello. This is Amanda. About my birthday party. I told you it was on the 15th, but... I've got to change it to the 13th. That's a Thursday, which I know isn't perfect. But no one can come on Friday the 14th because it's the school disco. Sorry about the change, but Mum and Dad have got something planned for me on the 15th. Anyway, the party's at my house and it's starting about 8 o'clock. Call me back and let me know if you can come. Now listen again. Hello, this is Amanda, about my birthday party. I told you it was on the 15th, but I've got to change it to the 13th. That's a Thursday, which I know isn't perfect. But no one can come on Friday the 14th, because it's the school disco. Sorry about the change, but Mum and Dad have got something planned for me on the 15th. Anyway... The party's at my house, and it's starting about 8 o'clock. Call me back and let me know if you can come. Six. Where is the motorcycle race going to finish? This year's motorcycle race will finish in the city centre. Hundreds of people are expected to be in the square in front of the town hall to watch the finish of the race on Saturday afternoon. 
For those who'd like to see the bikes in action, seating will be provided in the square outside the stadium. Race organizers recommend that from Castle Square, with its position on top of the hill, there'll be a good view of the bikes making their way through the city. Now listen again. This year's motorcycle race will finish in the city centre. Hundreds of people are expected to be in the square in front of the town hall to watch the finish of the race on Saturday afternoon. For those who'd like to see the bikes in action, seating will be provided in the square outside the stadium. Race organisers recommend that from Castle Square, with its position on top of the hill, there'll be a good view of the bikes making their way through the city. Seven. What will the woman repair next? I really want to go out on my bike, but it's got a flat tire. Can you fix it? I'm really busy at the moment. Oh, and we don't have anything to repair it with. Can't you do something else? Why don't you play football instead? But the football's flat as well. Oh, but it just needs more air. That shouldn't take too long. I've just finished putting some new glass in the window, so I'll have a coffee and then I'll do it. Now listen again. I really want to go out on my bike, but it's got a flat tyre. Can you fix it? I'm really busy at the moment. Oh, and we don't have anything to repair it with. Can't you do something else? Why don't you play football instead? But the football's flat as well. Oh, but it just needs more air. That shouldn't take too long. I've just finished putting some new glass in the window, so I'll have a coffee and then I'll do it. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a radio interview with a man called Robin Marshall, who has written a book about Argentina. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Today I'm with Robin Marshall, who has just written a book about travelling in Argentina. Robin, tell us about yourself. Well, I've travelled to South America a lot for my work, and I know Argentina well now. So well that I could be a tour guide if I wanted. I speak fluent Spanish, so I don't need anyone to translate for me. My job involves travelling around selling products for my company. I meet a lot of people doing that, and I wanted to share those experiences with others, so I decided to try writing. So, tell us about your last visit to Argentina. What was the weather like? Well, it was winter there, so mornings were cold, but I'd expected that. Every day they said on the radio that it would be sunny later, and sure enough it was. I wanted to go sightseeing, and the weather was perfect for that. And where did you go when you went sightseeing? Well, I went to a wonderful market that sold everything from modern art to old records of traditional music which I collect. I came home with a beautiful painting of the area. I also saw a wonderful antique chair, but unfortunately it was too big to bring back. Now, Argentina is famous for its dancing. 
Did you see any performances during your trip? I did, yes. It reminded me of when I used to attend dance classes. I enjoyed them, although I was never very good. I'm sure my teacher was pleased when I said I wasn't going to continue. But these dancers made it look so easy that at that moment I felt like joining in and dancing with them. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. And what else did you do? Well, I went to a small village on the coast. I took the bus there and got a room in a small hotel. The hotel owner was very friendly. He took me down the river in his boat. It was very beautiful. You could see the forest in the distance. Do you have a favourite place in Argentina? Definitely. It's a mountain near Buenos Aires. It's famous for its spectacular scenery. But when I went there it was very misty and the sun was just rising. You couldn't see much. There were no birds or animals about. It was totally quiet and I loved that. I shall go back one day. We look forward to reading your book. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Now listen again. Today I'm with Robin Marshall, who has just written a book about travelling in Argentina. Robin, tell us about yourself. Well, I've travelled to South America a lot for my work, and I know Argentina well now. So well that I could be a tour guide if I wanted. I speak fluent Spanish, so I don't need anyone to translate for me. My job involves travelling around selling products for my company. I meet a lot of people doing that, and I wanted to share those experiences with others, so I decided to try writing. So, tell us about your last visit to Argentina. What was the weather like? Well, it was winter there, so mornings were cold, but I'd expected that. Every day they said on the radio that it would be sunny later, and sure enough it was. I wanted to go sightseeing, and the weather was perfect for that. And where did you go when you went sightseeing? Well, I went to a wonderful market that sold everything from modern art to old records of traditional music, which I collect. I came home with a beautiful painting of the area. I also saw a wonderful antique chair, but unfortunately it was too big to bring back. Now, Argentina is famous for its dancing. Did you see any performances during your trip? I did, yes. It reminded me of when I used to attend dance classes. I enjoyed them, although I was never very good. I'm sure my teacher was pleased when I said I wasn't going to continue. But these dancers made it look so easy that at that moment I felt like joining in and dancing with them. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. And what else did you do? Well, I went to a small village on the coast. I took the bus there and got a room in a small hotel. The hotel owner was very friendly. He took me down the river in his boat. It was very beautiful. You could see the forest in the distance. Do you have a favourite place in Argentina? Definitely. It's a mountain near Buenos Aires. It's famous for its spectacular scenery. But when I went there it was very misty and the sun was just rising. You couldn't see much. There were no birds or animals about. It was totally quiet and I loved that. I shall go back one day. We look forward to reading your book. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three. Questions 14 to 19. You will hear a radio presenter talking about a museum where you can see a new film. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Next on the programme, we're offering free tickets to go and see a brand new film called A Year in Greenland. 
The film, which tells you all about the plants and animals in that wonderful country, has won a prize at the National Film Festival. It's well worth seeing. The film can only be seen at a fantastic new cinema that has just been completed inside the Science Museum in the city centre. It's showing this Sunday with performances every hour from midday onwards, with the last showing at five o'clock, two hours before the museum closes at seven. So there's six times to choose from. So why not take the whole family to the museum this Sunday? There's lots to do. Children will want to head straight down to the basement where the computers are kept. I promise you they'll come away with all sorts of exciting pictures they've created. Moving to the first floor, a working steam engine and a life-size model of a spaceship are among the favourite exhibits, and these are popular with people of all ages, not just children. And if you get thirsty, or if you want to have lunch out, there's an excellent cafe with wonderful views of the city on the top floor of the building. Entrance to the museum is free on Sundays, but it would normally cost £3.25 to go and see the film. To get your free tickets, you should email this programme by midday on Friday. We've only got a limited number of tickets, so the earlier you contact us, the more likely you are to get one. We'll then get back in email contact with you before 12 o'clock on Saturday if you've been successful. So, have a pencil and paper ready after this song. Now listen again. Next on the programme, we're offering free tickets to go and see a brand new film called A Year in Greenland. The film, which tells you all about the plants and animals in that wonderful country, has won a prize at the National Film Festival. It's well worth seeing. The film can only be seen at a fantastic new cinema that has just been completed inside the Science Museum in the city centre. It's showing this Sunday, with performances every hour from midday onwards, with the last showing at five o'clock, two hours before the museum closes at seven. So there's six times to choose from. So why not take the whole family to the museum this Sunday? There's lots to do. Children will want to head straight down to the basement where the computers are kept. I promise you they'll come away with all sorts of exciting pictures they've created. Moving to the first floor, a working steam engine and a life-size model of a spaceship are among the favourite exhibits, and these are popular with people of all ages, not just children. And if you get thirsty, or if you want to have lunch out, there's an excellent cafe with wonderful views of the city on the top floor of the building. Entrance to the museum is free on Sundays, but it would normally cost £3.25 to go and see the film. To get your free tickets, you should email this programme by midday on Friday. We've only got a limited number of tickets, so the earlier you contact us, the more likely you are to get one. We'll then get back in email contact with you before 12 o'clock on Saturday if you've been successful. So, have a pencil and paper ready after this song. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four. Questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear two neighbours, a woman, Natasha, and a man, Colin, talking about running. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part 4.
Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hi, Natasha. See you're going out for a run. You're lucky you don't have to go to work today. Oh, hello, Colin. I am going to the office, but I've started running to work instead of taking the bus. It means I can keep fit and save some money. Oh, I tried running to work for a while, but I didn't like breathing in all the traffic pollution, and I kept getting coughs. I soon went back to using public transport. I keep fit at the gym. Well, I found a route that avoids most of the main roads. But it's still almost five kilometres, and it must be dangerous. <laughs> That's why I choose quiet streets. If I could, I'd run in the country. That would be lovely. But it would mean leaving it till the weekends. Running gives me a wonderful feeling of freedom. It's just what I need before sitting down in the office every day. But surely you don't wear your tracksuit and trainers at work. <laughs> oh, I keep a suit at the office and change when I arrive. I think it's important to look professional, so I don't mind at all. Anyway, since you're so fit, are you going to join in the big race next month? <laughs> I'd like to. What's the distance? 20 kilometres. Anyone can enter, and there are prizes for different age groups. Hmm. Even if I come last, it will still be good fun. Running on your own can sometimes get quite lonely. Are you going to take part? Oh, yes. I've sent in my application form already. <laughs> I'll get one for you. But I'm not going to train by running to work. I'll run round the park a few times when I get home in the evenings. <laughs> That's safer. <laughs> OK. Anyway, I must go now or I'll be late. Bye. Now listen again. Hi, Natasha. See, so you're going out for a run. You're lucky you don't have to go to work today. Oh, hello, Colin. I am going to the office, but I've started running to work instead of taking the bus. It means I can keep fit and save some money. Oh, I tried running to work for a while, but I didn't like breathing in all the traffic pollution, and I kept getting coughs. I soon went back to using public transport. I keep fit at the gym. Well, I found a route that avoids most of the main roads. But it's still almost five kilometres, and it must be dangerous. <laughs> That's why I choose quiet streets. If I could, I'd run in the country. That would be lovely. But it would mean leaving it till the weekends. Running gives me a wonderful feeling of freedom. It's just what I need before sitting down in the office every day. But surely you don't wear your tracksuit and trainers at work. <laughs> oh, I keep a suit at the office and change when I arrive. I think it's important to look professional, so I don't mind at all. Anyway, since you're so fit, are you going to join in the big race next month? <laughs> I'd like to. What's the distance? 20 kilometres. Anyone can enter, and there are prizes for different age groups. Hmm. Even if I come last, it will still be good fun. Running on your own can sometimes get quite lonely. Are you going to take part? Oh, yes. I've sent in my application form already. <laughs> I'll get one for you. But I'm not going to train by running to work. I'll run round the park a few times when I get home in the evenings. <laughs> That's safer. <laughs> OK. Anyway, I must go now or I'll be late. Bye. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet.